Well, I've spent uh, a little over half an hour with the 25 micron uh, microgrid abrasive. And uh, you can see that we've done a really good job spherizing the mirror. And I now have the grinding from the center all the way out to the edge. So we're smooth. I've ground deep enough to get rid of all of the subsurface problems out at the edge. Uh, but it's time to look at the shape of this mirror and see what we need to do. Now I've put all three sets of measurements here. The preliminary measurements, the measurements part way through, and the measurements uh, that I just took after this last session. And you can see we're much more spherical now. If you look at the edge versus the center versus the, or excuse me, edge versus 50% versus center, and find the biggest difference between them. When we started it was 192 millimeters. In the middle of the process it was 28. Now we're down to only 10 millimeters difference. So you can see we're quite spherical here. But this last set of uh, readings, 3044, 3049, and 3054, are not really as close as I'd like them to be to our target, which was about uh, 3012 or 3013. So what we're going to do in the next grinding session is to stick with the 25 micron, and I'm going to use a different technique to try to uh, deepen the mirror out and move us closer to that uh, 30, 13, or 30, 12 target. I get a lot of questions from people about making the tile tools, and the method that I use is very simple. Uh, I get the tiles on a mat. They're just regular swimming pool tiles, hard all the way through, unglazed. And uh, basically I set them face down on the mirror on top of a piece of uh, adhesive back shelf paper so that the tiles stick to the paper. And then I make a dam around the outside of the mirror with a uh, wide strip of plastic taped together and then just mix up the dental plaster and pour it over the tiles. Now the tiles have a little backing on them so you have to mix the dental plaster a little bit thin so that it goes down in, into between the tiles. Uh, but then you let it set up for about a half an hour, take off the form, and away you go. You've got a nice tile tool. A lot of people uh, try to glue the tiles onto a, a form, onto a piece of uh, plaster. Uh, I've never liked that. Uh, it leaves too large a space from the top of the tile down to the form. Uh, with my method, the tiles are flush even with the plaster at the top, and then I use that Dremel tool to route out just a thin little uh, space between each of the tiles. And I only go down about a 32nd of an inch deep there. And the point of that is that it helps to distribute the abrasive. If you don't have any plaster up there, then the abrasive just drops down between those big tiles and uh, it's hard to keep it on the in, in action on the mirror. So uh, that's one thing. The, the other reason I have to put the, uh, you know, route out that little groove in there is that it helps to distribute both the abrasive and air and it tends to uh, give you a lockup on the t between the tool and the mirror if you don't have those groo grooves in there you can get a, a vacuum created in there that uh, air pressure then locks the mirror down onto the tool and it's really hard to get it off uh, so that's why I, I put those um, little channels in between each of the tiles on the tool Once you get good at this, you can uh, add abrasive without stopping the turntable. But I advise that you practice a little bit before you try to do it the first time. Uh, a little bit dangerous if you lose control of the mirror on top of the tool. Okay, now the point of uh, an overhanging stroke is to put more pressure on the center of the mirror so that we deepen the center of the mirror and in general deepen the mirror a little more quickly. And to effectively do this, you need to have more of an offset. Now there's two ways to do it. Instead of taking the normal one-third center over center stroke, you could take a longer stroke. You can go out to uh, you know as much as a almost a 50% stroke here, and that would uh, do the job. That would deepen it out. And then there's a second stroke where you can offset to the side. We can offset over here. And this way you're always uh, grinding with the center of the mirror more over the edge of the tool at, at the pressure point. And what happens here is that uh, the mirror grinds faster in the center here because with this weight hanging out here you have more pressure at the center of the mirror. And the faster you grind and the higher the pressure, 
the faster that the glass is removed from the mirror. Now the downside to these strokes is that they will not work evenly on the mirror. So if I was to grind this way for a good long time, instead of having, excuse me, instead of having a nice smooth spherical mirror, I would have a mirror that has kind of a deep hole in the center. And that's not desirable. So what we want to do is to uh, overcome that by varying the stroke a bit. A little more serum, or get a little more uh, 25 micron on there. And to do that, I would do something like take one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Where what I'm doing is taking three overhang strokes and then one stroke straight up the middle. And it's kind of surprising that that one stroke straight up the middle will help to keep the mirror spherized, but the overhang stroke will speed up the deepening of the mirror. So it's kind of a nice trick. I, I like using it because it will rapidly uh, remove glass from the center of the mirror, but still keep it fairly spherical as you go. And of course, the deal is that you can do both strokes. You could use that stroke and then change over and use a long center over center stroke for a little while if you like. Uh, the same thing, this stroke will also leave a hole in the center if you use it too long. So in order to avoid that, you can do like one, two, three, short. One, two, three, short. One, two, three, short. So either one of those two techniques, overhang to the right and then rip one up the middle or take the long straight stroke and take short one at the end. Uh, of the two, the offset is a little more aggressive and will deepen the mirror out. Uh, but the, off the offset with the over center stroke at the end will help to keep you pretty spherical. So I'm going to do a session now that will be about uh, 10 minutes long using that technique and then I'll do the measurements and we'll show you where it comes out. Well I ran about another 20 or 22 minutes maybe on the 25 micron and uh, finished out the mirror with the 25 micron. Did a check on the spherometer, center is at 3008, 50% zone at 3013, same at the edge, 3013. So I have a pretty good sphere running here. Outside part's good. I overcooked it just slightly in the center. Uh, as I said before, I wanted my target to be right on 3013. So that's about a half an inch uh, longer than it will be in the end. And I'm hoping to take that out uh, during polishing. Well, now it's time to move on to the 12 micron abrasive. What I do before that is I check the mirror under a good bright light really carefully and examine the center part of the mirror for pits. And what you want to do is look at the center, look at the 50% zone, and look at the edge. The likely place that you'll have pits are the center and the edge. And the edge is the most likely of all because it gets kind of the least work in mirror making. So if, if you like use a, a loop or something, a little magnifier, and examine those three areas, they should look identical. They should be the same. You shouldn't see any pits. Uh, and the texture is what you're looking at, it, and it should be the same. So uh, we're ready to go on now to the 12 micron, and we'll show you how we get started there. Sometimes during the course of grinding, the uh, shallow grooves between the tiles will uh, close up because the tiles have ground down. And to fix that, I just use a rotary tool. Uh, this is just a Dremel brand uh, rotary tool. And I use it with a little diamond, uh, it's like a grout removal bit. Uh, on the end and basically I just run it down through the uh, grooves in between the tiles to uh, take some out. just looks like this. A couple tricks to it, uh, make sure that you have a lot of little grooves on the end so that the abrasive fluid can get under there. Uh, oftentimes on a tile tool you'll have plaster along the edge and I usually just make several little cuts into it like this. You make some of those little cuts and then that allows the uh, material to get under there. And of course I do all of the rows and then flip it 90 degrees and do them in the other direction so that it's uh, completely done. Then oft times what I do after I've finished up that grinding, I take a what's called a sure form. It's a woodworking tool. 
uh, has like a cheese grater on the bottom and I just go around the outside edge to make sure that I haven't created any sharp uh, uh, sharp edges on the stones or on any of the, the plaster there. So I go all the way around with the sure form. And uh, the one trick here, if you are using uh, a rotary tool, when you come off the edge of the mirror or edge of the tool, uh, be very careful if you have a newspaper or something under it. If you touch that with that Dremel tool, it'll wrap it up and uh, there's a little danger there. Uh, also, I might recommend using a breathing mask here. Uh, a lot of dust gets up into the air and you won't want to breathe it. So that's how I do some uh, maintenance work on a ceramic tile and dental plaster tool. Well, I've started work with 12 micron. Move from the 25 micron to the 12 micron. And uh, if you remember from the last segment there, my radii are about 3013, 3013, and 3008. So uh, I'm just a little deep in the middle, so not really a problem. So moving here to the 12 micron, I'm basically just going to use the standard one-third center over center stroke. Getting a little dry here already. And uh, what I'm hoping to do with this one-third center over center is to basically uh, finish spherizing the machine, uh, the mirror, spherizing the mirror, and uh, try not to let it get too much closer to uh, 3,000 millimeter radius. So uh, what I'm going to do is to run about half of the 12 micron session, maybe about uh, 10 or 15 minutes, something like that, and then show you how you test to see if a uh, given uh, level of abrasive has uh, been used effectively and, and is over. Uh, so we'll grind away here for a little while and then come back and uh, I'll show you how to do that test on the mirror to check the progress of the fine grinding. Well my intention here was to grind in this mirror for 10 minutes and then demonstrate how to see that a mirror isn't fully ground from center to edge. Uh, apparently the 10 minutes with the 12 micron was enough to grind it fully from center to edge. Uh, to do this test, you take the mirror and you look at the top uh, at the top against a, a light so that the light is at a grazing angle. So you can see the reflection of this bright light off the surface of the mirror. And in the center, you would expect it to be uh, a little reflective at a grazing angle like this. And it is, as you can see here, you can see the white light reflecting on it. And as I go toward the edge and slide along the surface of this mirror, you see that the strength of the reflection doesn't really change. And uh, there it's going right to the left to the edge of the mirror, and it's even there. And uh, if the mirror isn't fully ground out, what you'll see at the edge is normally that the light will turn kind of orangish or brownish, and uh, you'll see a loss of quality out there on the edge on that reflection. But in this case, uh, the mirror is fully ground all the way out to the edge. So obviously the 10 minutes with the 12 micron was plenty to get the job done on this 12 inch mirror. So uh, what I'll probably do here is to, uh, I mean, I'm going to give this just a few more minutes with the uh, 12 micron just to make sure that we're fully uh, have all of the you know previous pits out uh, and then uh, move on to the 9 micron. Well, after the 12 micron session, you can see that the outer part of the mirror didn't change. It stayed at 3013. The 50% zone didn't change. And the center zone went from 3008 to 3017. So we did spherize the mirror a little more. The previous delta was 5, and we reduced it to 4. So the readings are just slightly closer together. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to the 9 micron and uh, do probably about a 15 minute session there. Uh, first though, I'll stop it after about four or five and see if we can see the effects of an incompletely ground surface. One quick test of how finely ground a mirror surface is, is to see if you can read a newspaper through the glass. In this case, this uh, particular mirror has been ground through with nine micron. And you can see here that you can see the headlines and read the headlines, 
but it's a little bit difficult to read anything finer than that. So uh, this mirror isn't quite through with the fine grinding stage yet. In this case I've been through 5 micron and you can see the headlines, the subheads, and even read the detailed text, the little text right out to the corner of the mirror. So this optic is finished with fine grinding and ready to go into the polish shop. Well the last test for this 12 inch mirror to see if we've got it uh, adequately through fine grinding here is the spherometer test. So I've got it set up with a 5 inch test plate. Three zero eight point one five. 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 and 308.15. So I've tested five, six places around the mirror. We're getting exactly the same test every time, 308.15. So the spherometer says that we have a perfect sphere accurate to two to a hundredth of a millimeter. <laughs> we don't actually have that accuracy. That's just uh, the, the reading accuracy of the instrument. But basically we get an identical reading everywhere on the surface of this mirror. So we know not only is it spherical, but it's also a good figure of revolution. So this mirror looks like it is indeed ready to go onto the polishing shot.